Assalamualaikum and good day So I will continue my lecture for chapter 4 Which will cover about power factor and power quality So for this chapter there are two part Okay part 1 and part 2 Okay this is the content title for chapter 4 Okay I have divided into two part Part 1 This one And part 2 so for part 1 we will cover uh, about power quality and also power factor and for part 2 we will cover harmonics and other PQ issues ok next we go to introduction to PQ ok what is PQ uh, there are different perspective about PQ the first is uh, for equipment, designer or manufacturer perspective uh, PQ is a perfect sinusoidal wave With no variation in the voltage No noise on the grounding system Okay, second perspective for electrical utility Voltage availability of, or outage That is PQ Okay, and then for last perspective, for industrial or end user, PQ is the power that works for whatever equipment the end user is applying. Okay, next, uh, continue of introduction to PQ. What is PQ? Okay, none of the hypothetical point of view is properly Focus. Okay, for IEEE definition, PQ is the concept of powering and grounding sensitive electronic equipment in a manner suitable for equipment. That is the IEEE definition. And more concise definition is any power problem manifested in V, I and F. F is frequency deviations that result in failure or misoperation of customer equipment ok this is the relationship between power system uh, supply power and consumer at the loads of the PQ ok we can see here ok for voltage okay, this one voltage quality uh, this will affect from the supply power ok and then for current quality ok this one is effect from the consumer this one to the supply power and for power quality uh, the effect is from the both side from the supply and also from the consumer Okay, so next, uh, there are some loads that contribute to power quality variation. The first one is the modern loads and equipments are more sensitive to power quality variance. And the second one is high efficiency adjustable speed motors, drives and shunt capacitor results in increasing in harmonics levels. So, we have to increase awareness of the power quality issues by the end users. Okay, here is the PQ concern. Okay, there are some parameters that will involve in PQ. The first one is power factor. Okay, and the second one is harmonics. Okay, harmonics is the sum disturbance occur in the curve. And then we have voltage set. Or deep, okay. We can see here there are some uh, drop in voltage value from the actual, and then we have V swell, okay. There are some uh, different and some increasing in the voltage value here. You can see here, and then lastly is transient. The okay, transient is the sum uh, disturbance or higher value for certain period. Okay, this is the PQ waveform. 
you can see here the first one is the interruption you can see the interruption interruption is between the signal maybe for a certain period next uh, voltage sagging or dip okay we can see here the value of the voltage is sagging dip for a certain value and then we can see here voltage swell swell you can see the value is increased for certain period and this is the harmonics we can see usually the harmonics is uh, taken at the peak of the value this is the harmonics and we also have notches okay this is the notches disturbance along the signal here and then we have frequency changes okay we can see here uh, the frequency is different okay and then we have impulse or spike okay there are spike for certain period okay it shows uh, an impulse condition and also lastly is the interference okay we can see along the signal there are interference Okay, next we go to the source of PQ. Okay, uh, and user equipment become more sensitive to PQ due to many microprocessor based controls. Uh, second, complexity of the industrial process. Third, large computer system in many business facilities. And lastly, is power electronics equipment used for enhancing system stability, operation and efficiency. They are major source of bad PQ and are vulnerable to bad PQ as well. Okay, we can see here a source of load of PQ problems. We can see this one is for loads. We can see here the first one is the adjustable speed motor drive. Okay, and then uh, computer also contribute to the PQ problems and then high intensity lightings okay and lastly is microprocessor control equipment all this load can contribute to PQ problems effect of poor PQ first equipment malfunction Excessive wear of premature failure of equipment, increased cost from downtime, and increased maintenance, repair time and expenses, and lastly, outside consultant expenses is needed to tackle the PQ problem. Okay, this is the PQ categories based on duration. Okay, there are four categories here. The first one is transient and the time range is nanoseconds to three cycles. And second one is short duration. There are three types of uh, short duration. The first one is instantaneous. Uh, time range is between 0 0.5 seconds to 30 cycles. And then momentary, 30 cycles to 3 seconds. And temporary, uh, the time range is 3 seconds to 1 minute. And the third one is long duration. Okay, the period or the time range is more than 1 minute. And lastly is steady state. Uh, the time range is continuous. Okay, this is the transient condition. The first one is impulse. Okay, we can see here for impulse, there are uh, overshoot or spike for certain period. There are short period here. That is impulse. And for oscillatory, there are oscillos oscillation. We can see here there are oscillation uh, at the waveform for certain period. Okay, for short duration, there are three types okay, of PQ problem. The first one is voltage sag. We can see here there are sagging 
of the voltage okay the voltage drop for certain short duration here and for voltage swell the voltage is increased or overshoot here we can see here over voltage for certain short duration okay and then we have voltage outage here okay the value is zero for certain short duration okay for long duration there are four types of pq okay condition the first one is under voltage okay we can see here there are under voltage okay drop here voltage drop here for a certain long period okay and then over voltage okay we can see here the voltage is over okay for long duration okay and then we have voltage outage okay the voltage is zero for certain long duration and lastly is voltage interference we can see here there are interference along the waveform okay okay this slide is about computer equipment disturbance table okay we can see here uh, there are suspected interference here okay the types of the interference and this is the cost or the computer equipment okay we can cross check what is the cost when the interference this happen okay we can check with this table okay next we go to subtopic 4.3 pq problems cost and solution okay this is the power quality problems and this is the typical cost and this is the example solutions okay first we go to impulse transient okay the typical cost is lightning okay and then electrostatic discharge and load switching okay the example solution is by using such arrester filters and isolation transformer Okay, and then second is oscillatory transient. Okay, the typical cost is line or cable switching and capacitor switching. So, the solution is by using such arrester. Okay, and then filters and also isolation transformer. Okay, next, uh, voltage sex or swell. Okay. So, the punya cost is remote system faults and the example solution is ferroresonance transformer and also by using UPS. And then we have under or over voltage and the cost is motor starting and load variation. Usually for motor starting, we have over voltage. And the solution is by using voltage regulators and ferroresonant transformers. Okay, for harmonic distortion, the typical cost is nonlinear load and system resonant. And the solution is by using active or passive filter at the load and also transformer with zero sequence components. Okay, last is V flicker, voltage flicker. So, the cost is intermittent loads. And also, we have motor starting and up furnace. And the solution is by using static bar system. Okay, next we go to subtopic 4.4 uh, about power factor. Okay, what is power factor? PF. Okay, industrial loads are mostly is in inductive type. And motor require uh, reactive power Q to set up the magnetic field. And active power P to produce the useful work. Shaft horse power. Okay, this is the power diagram. You can see here. Okay. This is the 
active power P which is equal to V I cos theta. The unit is what? Okay, give equation 4.1. And then we have, okay, this one in Y as this. Okay, this is the reactive power Q which uh, is equal to V I sin theta. The unit is var. Equation 4.2. And this is the apparent power S, which is equal to V I. The unit is V VA, V V A. Question four point three. And this is the power factor angle. Okay. So, uh, this is the equation for power. Question four point four. Okay, power factor. Okay, what is power factor? Power factor is a measure of how efficiently electrical power is consumed. So, there are two cases here. Okay, to get the scenario. Okay, the first is uh, runner uh, run from A to B. Okay, straight line here. So, we can see there are 100% of energy burn is being used to move the runner from A to B. Okay, this happened because P okay, from A to B is in X as is. Okay, this one is on, on horizontal. So, we can see here P is equal to S cos theta. So, theta here is 0. Okay, there are no angle here. So, which is equal to S cos 0. Okay. Cos 0 is equal to 1. Which is equal to S. So, means that uh, the power used is 100%. Okay. Because P is equal to S. 100%. There are no losses. Okay. The second case here is A from A from A to B. Okay, we can see here from A to B. But there are angle here. Say the angle is 30%. So, this one 30, sorry, 30 degree. The angle. So, to get the P, which is equal to S cos 30 degree, which is equal to 0 0.866 S. Okay, so we can see here the percentage is almost 87. Okay, so only 87% of the energy burn is being used to move the runner in the horizontal direction of B. Okay, because there are angle here. And so extra energy, okay, extra energy will be required to achieve the same objective. Okay, to achieve uh, another 100%, we have uh, extra energy. Okay, this is power triangle. We can see here is power factor is the ratio of active power P to apparent or total power S. Okay, this is the power triangle. We can see here P and this one is Q and this is the S. So, to get the power factor, which is equal to P divided by S. Okay, which is equal to cos theta. Okay, so there are two conditions. The first one is lagging for inductive loads. And also, leading power factor for capacitive load. Okay, this is the phasor relationship between P, Q and S. We can see here, this is the P... Okay, this for P. Okay, and then we have Q here. This one is for lagging Q. Okay, and also we have another Q here for leading. Okay, this one is for leading a uh, capacitive load. Okay, Q also. And we have S here. Okay, this one is. S. 
So there are theta here, angle here between P and S. And to get the power factor, power factor is equal to cos theta which is equal to P divided by S. Okay, this is the impact of pole PF. We can see there are two waveforms here. The first one is, okay, this uh, lagging between voltage and current. Okay, the blue line is the voltage and the green line is the current. We can see here there are obvious lagging and there are wasted power here. Okay, when the lagging is more, the theta also uh, higher. Okay, compared to the below waveform here, we can see here the lagging is uh, lower compared above waveform and also the power factor also less. Okay, next we go to subtopic 4.5 power factor correction. Okay, after we know what is uh, power factor and how to measure the power factor and then we have to know how to improve the power factor. There are two way of improving PF. The first one is reduce lagging reactive current demand of the loads. Okay, as I show in the previous slide, when the lagging is more, so the power factor also increase. Okay, and then the second one is compensate lagging reactive current by supplying leading active current to the power system ok PFC equipment could be capacitor, synchronous motors or static bar compensator ok this is the capacitor units for PFC ok uh, the unit okay, the, or the amount of the capacitor that can be installed is depend on power factor Okay, advantage of PFC. Okay, the first is power consumption will reduce and electricity bill also reduce and also can reduce heating in the equipment, increase equipment life and then transformer and distribution equipment losses can be reduced and extra KVA availability from the existing supply. And reduction of voltage drop in the electrical system. Okay, next we go to advantages of PFC. Okay, benefit. There are two benefit. The first one is uh, by installing capacitor, we can supply reactive power required by inductive loads. Okay, and the second one, it can decrease conductor size. Okay, this is the figure of utility supply Q. Okay, we have Q here. This is the load. Okay, and then this is the connection of how capacitor is connect to the load. Okay, the capacitor will connect in parallel with the load. Okay, by insert by put the capacitor, we can see here the kilowatt can be reduced. Okay, the first case here, we can see here when the kilowatt is 100% and the kilowatt is 100. So, we can see here the power factor is 70% if the KVR is 141. Okay, to get the power factor, we just uh, divide power factor is equal to P divided by S. So for first case, uh, the P is 100 divided by 141. So we can get the value is almost 70 percent. Okay. Same goes to the second case here. Okay. When we put capacitor, the K bar here can be reduced from 100 to 75. So we get the power factor is 80 cent increase from the previous case okay okay the last case here is 
when the kilowatt is 100 plus 100 and also kva is 100 so it means that p is equal to s so the power factor is 100 percent so it shows that when we put the capacitor in parallel with the load the power factor can be increased Okay, uh, next, uh, benefit of installing capacitor. Uh, the first one can reduce the loss. Okay, this is the formula. How to re calculate percentage of loss reduction. Okay, uh, this is the original power factor based on the actual load. And this is the desired power factor uh, for which power factor that we want, the new power factor. So, by using equation 4.6, we can calculate what is the percentage of loss reduction. And next is, can reduce voltage drop. Okay, anyway, severe over correction will cause a damage insulation and equipment. Okay, this is the formula. Okay, to calculate the percentage of voltage rise. Okay, uh, this is the capacitor value times with the transformer percentage of Z divided by KVA of transformer ok so for PFC we go to example 1 an industrial consumer has the following loads okay, number 1 uh, 9 kilowatt of lighting at unity power factor ok unity power factor is equal to power factor is equal to 1 and then uh, a motor taking 12 kVA at 0 0.75 power factor lagging. A number of small motor taking 15 kilowatt at 0 0.6 power factor lagging. The loads are balanced over the three phase of 400 volt supply system. Okay, the question is determine the total kilowatt kVA and kva for all loads and b the overall power factor and c is the line current okay this is the solution okay first we have to get what is the p and q for all loads okay before we get the total load so uh, by putting all the value in the table okay we get uh, this is the value of P and Q for 3 loads and the total is equal to this one is for P 33 kilowatt and this is the value of K bar ok and then we have to calculate what is the total KVA so to get the S total we have to use this formula P power of 2 plus Q power of 2. So to get the S, we can P power of 2 plus Q power of 2. So we are 2. Okay, so by using this formula, we can get the overall KVA. KVA is equal to 43.23 KVA. Okay, then we have to calculate what is the overall power factor. Okay, so by using the formula, power factor is equal to sorry power factor is equal to p divided by s p total divided by s total so we get 0 0.763 lagging and then lastly we have to calculate what is the line current okay uh, to get the il we have to divide s with the voltage okay so we get 62.4 M. Okay, so we have to divide by square root 3 because uh, I, I line is represent as I single phase. Okay, next we go to example 2. Okay, for power factor correction. Okay, calculate A, the total KVA to supply by a capacitor bank in order to improve the overall power factor of the system of example 120.9 power factor lagging b the value of capacitor required assuming that the capacitors are connected 
first in star connection and second is in delta connection okay uh, this is the solution for example to question number one okay this is the power triangle you can see here this is the power triangle from the example one we know that this is the kilowatt this is the p and this is the q okay q for the existing system a b represent as a b and this is the s okay with theta one okay theta one represent as a power factor uh, 0 0.763 uh, this is the existing power factor and for example uh, 2 we have to improve this power factor to 0 0.9 power factor so we have to calculate what is the k var required uh, to supply to the system to improve the power factor from theta 1 to theta Okay, this is the new theta. So to get the theta, we have to uh, shift. Uh, sorry, we have to cost inverse cost power factor. Okay, and then we get twenty five point eight four. So this is the theta two. So uh, with this theta, we can calculate what is the AC. Okay. AC is the Q for new uh, system with improvement of 0 0.9 power factor. So to get uh, KVA that we have to supply to improve the power factor is represented as BC. Okay, this this is the KVA that will be installed, will be in supply to improve to AC. Okay. So we have to to get the BC. Okay. We have to minus AB with AC. Okay. So BC is the K var that will be installed to the system to improve power factor from 0 0.763 to 0 0.9. Okay. So BC. Okay, this is the AB. Okay, we know AB is uh, already given. Okay, Q for the existing. And then to get the AC is by using this formula. P tangent theta 2. So, we get this formula. So, we get the P, BC is equal to this value. This is for 3 phase. Okay, so we have to calculate for single phase. So, we have to divide with 3. Okay, so this is the value for Q for single phase. Okay, so uh, this is the formula. Okay, this is the formula for Q uh, uh, for, for Q that represent as V and XC in the formula. Okay, next we go to questions B. Okay, uh, the value of capacitor required assuming that the capacitor are connected in uh, star and also delta. Okay, so first for star connection, okay, this for star connection, we have to convert the V to the single phase. So, by divide into square root 3. So, we get 2, 3, O, oh, oh, this is the voltage for single phase. So, by using this formula, okay, by using this formula, we can get what is the value of XC. Then, after we get the XC, we can calculate what is the C. Okay. So, from this formula, we get the value of XC. Okay. Then, from XC, we can calculate what is the C. Okay. So, uh, XC is by using this formula. Okay. Just XC is equal to V power of 2 divided by Q. Okay, then to get the C is equal to 1 over 2 pi F X C. Okay, so uh, just uh, putting all the value here, so we get the value of X C here. 
okay and then we uh, Q represent as the Q improvement okay Q that BC represent as BC value also uh, so uh, we can get the value of XC and then from XC we can get the value of C okay this is the capacitor value that can improve the power factor from 0 0.763 to 0.9 power factor and then for delta connection okay we know for delta connection v single phase okay v single phase is equal to v three phase okay so just by using this uh, voltage value just put in the formula and we get the xc is equal to this value and also then we calculate what is the c okay Okay, this is the practical PFC table. Okay, uh, we have to calculate what is the QC. Okay, by using this formula. So, QC uh, is the improvement of uh, power factor Q that will be installed to improve the power factor that is QC. So, by using this formula, we can calculate what is the value of QC. Okay, PF1 represent as uh, P or power factor original okay and then PF2 is represent F P power factor desired okay so we can calculate the value and put all the QC in the table okay this is the effective reactive power Okay, differences in V level between the supply system and the capacitor used will produce different injected reactive power into the system. So, the factor uh, to be considered is by using this formula. Okay, this is the formula to calculate the Q capacitor. Okay, where Q cap uh, is equal to effective reactive power provided by capacitor. QS represent as effective reactive power injected into supply system. V cap represent as capacitor voltage level, and VS represent as supply system voltage level. Okay, this is the example three effective reactive power. If the capacitor of five to five volt is chosen as the PFC component in example one and two. Determine the effective reactive power so that the overall system power factor can be improved to 0 0.9 lagging. Okay, this is exercise 1, practical PFC. Okay, student has to upload in individual activities in order. Okay, and industrial consumer has a load taking 35 kilowatt. Calculate the QC in order to improve the PF original to PF desired as in table below. So, this is the PF original of the loads and this is the desired power factor. So, you have to calculate what is the QC. Okay, put all the value of QC in this uh, table. Okay, I think that's all for chapter 4, part 1. And we will continue to part 2. Thank you.